Hi, this is Suzanne Long, Accounting Faculty with Jackson College. We're going to be working on a challenging account analysis problem today. This gets at accrual basis accounting um, by taking a look at a, a company that's using cash basis. So we're really going to get into accounts and um, how to analyze information as well as adjusting journal entries. Let's take a look at the information that's provided in the problem as well as where we're going to be going with this problem. So this section at the top, this whole top piece, everything in black and white, is the information that's given in the problem. It starts out with the name of the company, Miller Island Sales, and they're a distributor of fishing supplies. So they're going to be buying and selling fishing supplies. And this is a balance sheet, balance sheet for year one. So we see assets and liabilities and equity. Beginning balances looks like we're going to be entering those in. Then we've got this note here. Analysis of year two cash transactions. Deposits. I added the A. Deposits. Checks written. Plus the summary. So this section here is all about cash for year two, cash in and cash out for year two. Now we also need the year-end adjusting information. Hey, here's me. Hello, everybody. And one through six over here is the information we need to do our adjusting journal entries. And notice what's required. Worksheet, income statement, and balance sheet for year two. Um, I did my very best to keep the information that you're seeing in this problem um, exactly the same or very close to what you see in the textbook. I didn't add any hints or take any hints away. It's, it's all very consistent. So we're asked to do a worksheet. Here's a worksheet. Um, what I recommend is you go and find one that you've already created or use a template. Of course you can create one from scratch too, but if you've already got one, um, that's what I did, and then I just added some things to it. Um, this problem also asks for financial statements. So same thing, I went and found some financial statements that I had and just kind of, you know, pieced them together here until it, it looked like it was going to fit about the right number of accounts and things. Notice that the problem specifically requires an income statement and a balance sheet, and I added the statement of equity. As you know, Income statement, revenue and expense, net income. Net income will carry forward to the capital statement, equity statement. Ending capital will carry forward to the balance sheet. So we have to do this work to get to the balance sheet. Let's just do it, present it, document it. So that's why you see all three there. And then below that, you see I've just opened up some space for my own work. This is not required. Um, but it's necessary to, to solve the problem, to work through the accounts and figure out what's going on. Some of this um, you could argue is, is extra documentation, but some of it you would have to do anyways in order to figure out what you're going to do up here. So down at the bottom here we've got supporting documentation. In the middle we've got the requirements of the problem. And at the top we've got the problem itself. All right, let's get rolling. So we start here with the beginning opening balances. This is end of the year, year two. And I'm going to call that, let's make this adjusted trial balance, year one. This is, you know, real deal, end of the year. And I've already entered them in, but if, if I hadn't, you know, I'd be like equals, click, enter, that kind of thing. Get them all in there and check and make sure we balance. Notice that this balance is a little bit different than this balance. Why is that? Here we've got 26,700 and here we've got 33,200. Hmm. Do you see why? Up here we're summarizing assets and then we're summarizing liabilities and equity. Balance or the balance sheet equation, assets equals liabilities plus equity. 
But here we're summarizing debits versus credit, and accumulated depreciation is a contra asset. So it's in the asset section, but it's a contra asset. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, so we are good to go up here with the beginning balances. We're all set. Now take a look at the next section for cash. And I want to focus in on deposits. And I added the A. Total deposits. Deposits means cash. Means increases to cash. Deposits to cash. That means debit cash. So we're going to record debit cash 173.2 based on this phrase right here. What do you think about that? Collections from customers except for a loan. Let's do it. What was that amount again? 173. I'm just going to copy and paste it. 173.2. This is going to be our first supporting journal entry. Deposits to cash, debit cash. And we were told it's, it's almost all related to payments from customers. What account is that? What, what does that look like when we receive cash from customers? That's debit cash and credit accounts received. One of the first journal entries we do in, in an accounting class, an intro class. Receive cash from customers on account right there. Um, and this one had another piece. Remember, this one had the 10000 So there was also a bank loan. Let's look at that wording again. All deposits are collections from customers. Got it. Accounts receivable. Except for a long-term bank loan. Sounds like a note to me. Right there. Note payable. Now, there's all kinds of things you can do. I'm going to copy and paste right there. You can copy and paste cells, you can copy and paste up in here, it, it, then it won't change your formatting around. So all kinds of things you can do um, to avoid typing. <laughs> Alright, let's balance this journal entry out. So we've got cash debit, two credits, most of it is accounts receivable, most of it is payments from customers. Okay. This is what I'm calling transactions during year two, and this was A. I'm going to do an equals, click, enter. That's a cell reference. Let's get this A journal entry all transferred up into our worksheet. Okay, there's our 10,000. And here you can see, yep, I'm in balance. Let's go ahead and put the auto sum in down here at the bottom. Click where you want it, click auto sum, and then click and drag. That is what I want for auto sum. Now I've got these spaces here. Uh, I'm just going to go ahead and copy that. So I'm clicking on my auto sum, and then wait till you get that plus sign for auto fill. I'm going to copy and paste it over. I basically want auto sums everywhere except these and then I can delete where I don't want them. It's nice to have the auto sum waiting for you because I can you know I can track myself if I have a typo or something so I can kind of keep my eye like nope I'm good I'm good no typos. Alright let's look at B. B is checks written. Checks written checks that's cash that's decreases to cash so we've got a credit to cash for 169.8 based on all of this stuff. So let's copy and paste the stuff down. And I'm going to have a credit to cash. Credit to cash was... Well, you could do an auto sum too, right? Either which way. And then I'm going to clean this up. These were indented above. See these little arrows here? I'm going to put them back where they belong. And then I'm going to go through each one. Inventory and cash. Yes, leave it alone. Salary. Salary's what? Ugh. Ooh, time out. We got to figure this out. Is this going to be salaries payable or salaries expense? Which one's it going to be? 
So either which way, both accounts are going to end up cleaned out through the adjusting entry that comes next. I would say let's use salaries payable. Let's 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 record it all into salaries payable to clear out this twelve hundred. Rent. That's going to be an expense. Yep, right there, rent expense. So I need to add expense. Again, I'm being consistent with the language in the textbook. They said salaries and rent, so you have to decide are these going to be expenses or payables. Equipment should be fine. Yep. And then I've got two expenses, office and auto expense. Yep, those are down there. And withdrawals. I'm going to leave that one alone. That's fine. Dawson, O'Connor, withdrawals. Yep, that's fine. And then if you wanted to, you could you could do an auto sum just to check yourself. Like, did I get everything in there right? Was there any problem with my copy-paste? No, nope, I'm good. And then all of this needs to get recorded up here in the transactions. Remember, we're going from these balances before we're adding in these changes. What are the changes that happen during the year? So let's start with credit cash. Uh, I think I'm going to go this way. Inventory debit. Inventory debit. Boy, this is when I really miss all of you in class because you can you can holler out at me. Hey, you're on the wrong line. <laughs> I don't have any help. Salaries payable, debit. All right. Rent expense, debit. These are equals. Click enter. Cell reference. Uh, let's see, we did rent. So equipment is next. Equals. Click. And note payable. Isn't that interesting? Maybe we should talk about notes payable. Office expense. Auto expense. Whew, almost goofed those up. Withdrawals. And am I in balance? Yes. Okay, good. So if I'm looking at my A's, I can see how my A's are okay. And then I, if I had to, I could test my B's. B's quite complex, right? There's a lot going on with that um, decrease to cash. So if we were out of balance, you know, we could check and, you know, make sure there isn't a typo, that kind of thing. So these are the transactions during year two. Cash in cash out. Let's go back up to where that information was given and I'm going to go ahead and highlight that. Blue, we're good. So we've got our beginning balances in, we've got our transactions during the year in. So we are good here and we're good here. Now we need to do um, balances. So you should do formulas for your balances. So is this, some of them might end up looking goofy. Let's just see what happens. So this is an asset. So we're going to have a debit plus a debit minus a credit. Now I'm going to click and drag and then I'm going to clean it up. So I don't want that or that. I do want that. Anything that's a negative. Yeah, and let's double check here. Asset, asset, equipment, payable is out of whack until we do the adjusting entry. Withdrawal, a couple of expense accounts. Okay, we're good. Okay, now let's do the same thing for, we're going to have to start with receipt. Well, receivable is just going to be weird. Let's just go ahead and get it over with. Receivable is going to be sticking out in the credit position until we do the adjusting entry. Then it'll be okay. Same thing for salaries payables, sticking out in the debit position until we get it, get it all done. Um, where's our first regular? Here we go. 
accumulated depreciation would be plus credit minus debit. And I'm going to copy and paste that down a bit and get rid of the ones I don't want. Okay, so I've got accumulated and payable, another payable, capital, and I'm missing something. What am I missing? So I'm going to do a little, and this could be you too, what's the difference between 193.350 and 192.150? Did not like that. Okay, I'll do it this way. 193.350 minus 192.150 is $1,200. Oh, my salary is payable. So salary is payable is the debit minus the beginning balance. So I was looking for the difference. What was the difference down here? And then I remembered, yep, there was a $1,200 up here. So I, I just demonstrated using formulas for those ending balances. Um, I still think that's better. But you could also just go one by one. Just go line by line. You don't have to do the copy fill. One way or the other, we want to get our kind of um, in-between uh, balances here. Remember, this is cash basis, and things are a little out of whack right now. Okay, let's take a look at the adjustments. So moving over here, let's take a look at the first one. Counts receivable, end of year two, $9,200. Okay, remember that, we're going to take that down. $9,200, counts receivable. $9,200, right here, end of year balance. $9,200. And I'm going to put it down here. And I thought, what? A T account? Yes. So accounts receivable, beginning of year, end of year. Beginning of year, end of year. Mm -hmm. And we already did something with accounts receivable right here. Remember those cash payments received from customers? So we've already got this $163,200. And that was from A. Oops, I still got my caps lock on. So we're doing account analysis right now. That's what we know so far about accounts receivable. We know the beginning and ending balance. We know the credit for customer payments. What we don't know is the accrued revenue amount right here. And let's make that pop out. I'm going to put a little yellow right there. And this is going to be our number one as in adjusting entry number one. <laughs> we need to know what this is, right here. Yeah. Now, how are you going to figure that out? This plus this minus this equals this. How can we do that as a formula? Let's see, if these two, like if I subtracted, you know, then it would be kind of like credit and we want to, so it's going to be 9200 plus the difference between those other two. And let's test it. Debit plus debit minus credit. Whew, okay. So you can play games with the formula. You can also solve this algebraically. Debit plus, we don't know, plus x minus 163.200 equals 9.200. So if you like it linear, you can solve for the x. You can do it that way. I also have students that do subtotals. They'll, you know, maybe insert a row and do a subtotal, excuse me, debit side, credit side. So there's different ways you just want to be careful solving for that, that piece right there. Okay, so we are doing number, maybe I want to skip a space. We're doing number one here. Let me just highlight a bit. I want these all to be... There we go, to the left. So we've got debit accounts receivable. I'm going to copy this one. Debit 162,000. Now, why? What's going on here? What's this credit? What do you know about this kind of transaction? Why would we record 
debit accounts receivable. For what? Pause. Okay, this is the accrued revenue adjusting journal entry. So this credit is gonna be revenue. Now what is this business all about? What do they do? It was Dawson O'Connor, Miller Island Sales Distributor. So they're selling, they're selling fishing product. Here's the revenue account. So you can always check. You know, you can think back to the business and all that, but this business is established. This is not year one. You're not setting up the chart of accounts. We need to use sales. Debit receivable, credit revenue. In this case, sales. Accrued revenue. Okay, that takes care of accounts receivable. Good. Okay, we need to get this into the accounts. Accounts receivable. When you get that little dollar sign, it means there's not enough space. So I just opened up that. Here I'm closing it. Here I'm opening it, making it bigger. Interesting. It was 162,000. You can enter it or do a cell reference. Sales. Same thing. That's going to want just a little bit bigger. 162. So now I'm tracking, you know, am I in balance here? Yeah. Okay. Good. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. All right, number one is done. Let's take a look at number two. Counts payable. Counts payable at the end of year one is this, related to this. And accounts payable at the end of year two is this, related to this. So my suggestion is that we do two adjusting entries. We'll do one and one entry to close out the old balance and we'll do a second adjusting entry to set up the new balance. To start, let's get these numbers, these beginning and ending balance numbers in. 6400, 8700. 6400, 8700. There's the 6400 and here's our 8700. And come down, 6400, 8700. So now we're going to analyze accounts payable. Beginning to ending and we've got these two changes. We're going to start by getting rid of the old year. Get rid of that stuff. These, I would all like, oh that's not going to let me do it. These all need to be left justified too. So we're going to start by close out the current balance. Accounts payable, 6400 Get rid of this beginning balance. Now, what was it for? It was inventory and office expense, and it was these two amounts. Could copy and paste that. That's what I think I'm going to do, and then change it when I get down there. Or if you can remember it, just remember it and drop it in. These need to be credits. And these need to scoot on over. Again, that top section was the way the book had presented things. Uh, right here, these two are indented. That's uh, these guys right here, these little blue arrows. I'm going to move them back over. So this was year one, accounts payable. It's, you know, kind of like, I hate to say close because it's not a closing entry, but let's um, undo that. And then let's set up the current year. We could even call this like 2A. And then we're going to have 2B. We just got two debits and we're going to have a credit to, what was it, 8,700, right? Yeah, right here, 8700 So get rid of that 64 and set up the 87. Now, I gotta go back up. What was the 8700 all about? I'm gonna go ahead and highlight these because we're pretty much done here. 
Okay, now we've got inventory, inventory and auto. There we go. And I'm closing these out. <laughs> I should have done it before I made them blue. <laughs> Hang on a sec. <coughs> Excuse me. One thing I love about working at home is my dog. <laughs> She just got on my feet. Okay, so here's close out year one and add in close out year one, set up year two, remove prior year, establish current year, however you want to say that. Now I noticed that some of my formatting changed here and I'm okay with that. So um, let's look at accounts payable. Okay, yep, I need to get this guy in here. 2B, so I've got accounts payable debit, accounts payable credit, here's that debit, here's that credit. So these two wipe each other out and this carries down. So I don't feel the need to do any formula or anything there. Now, we need to record these effects up in the worksheet. Debit, credit. Here's accounts payable, debit, credit. I was calling this 2A, I was calling this 2B. Mm -hmm. Now I've got inventory, credit, 6100. Inventory, credit, 6100. That was a 2A. What else was in 2A? Office expense, credit, 300. Office expense, credit, 300. That was a 2A. Now let me look at my 2As. I got a 2A, 61, or 3. Yep, okay, so those are all good. Now let's finish up the 2B. Inventory, debit, 8,500. And that is 2B. And what else we got down here? Auto expense, 200. And let's look at the two B's. So I got, oh, see, that one. That one's on the wrong side, right? Debit 200. So let's look at the two B's. So just a second ago, I'm like, wait, no. So this visual check really is helpful. 8,700, 200. So I got 87 on this side, and here's my 87 on this side. And you want to keep your eye down here. Just keep glancing, you know, am I in balance? Am I in balance? It's easy, just like I did. It's easy to get something on the wrong side. It's easy to type something wrong. I'm surprised I haven't done that yet. Okay, so that takes care of accounts payable. Looking good. All right, let's see what's next. Salaries payable at the end of year two is 1800 Salaries payable, end of year two is eighteen hundred. So we're going from twelve hundred to eighteen hundred. Twelve hundred, eighteen hundred. Okay, so take a look at the T account. I remember doing something with salaries payable, right? Here. B was forty two fifty. And I'm pretty sure that's it. Mm -hmm. So this is going to be number three down here. Before and after, those were given. 4250 is coming from payments, cash payments. So we need to figure out this credit right there. It's going to be number three. Again, if you were to do this linear, we'd have credit side accounts. So we'll start with the credit, 1200 plus X, we don't know, minus 4250 debit equals 1800 credit. If you were to cram this all into a formula, 
we're going for 1800 compare that against the difference between the other two I think that's what we want 1800 balance minus the difference between the two plus the difference between the two that must be it I think I'm supposed to do a plus there let's test it credit plus credit minus debit okay here we go so you're welcome to do a formula you're welcome to do algebra you need to solve for that missing credit piece some students like to do a subtotal as well let's do um, well no I'm gonna keep going let's say we could work through the algebra I could show you all three ways to do a t-account but really that's more of a an earlier class not so much this class okay so we are good with number three we've got a credit to salaries payable for 48.50 now we need the debit this is the adjusting entry to record accrued salaries we need to record salaries so the debit is dun 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 what are you thinking? The debit is salaries expense. So that's our adjusting journal entry to accrue salaries, record salaries, increase expense, increase payable. Okay, 48.50. Let's get that recorded in. Here's expense. And here's payable. Check. Good. And moving on to the next one. Okay. Number four is all about equipment and depreciation. Straight line method, 10 year life. Oh, look at this. The new equipment purchased in year two acquired July 1st. So that's going to be July 1st to December 31st. That's half a year of depreciation for that new equipment. Zero salvage value. So straight line is cost minus salvage minus zero divided by life. That gives you one year of depreciation. And then once you've got one year, you know, it's real easy to convert into... You know, in this case, we're going to need six months. So, what's going on with equipment? Okay, here's our equipment that we started with, beginning of the year. And this is the equipment that we purchased during the year. So, eight and four. I would like to do one calculation for depreciation expense, that, that one formula that records the whole thing. So, if you like, you could pause, try that formula, and then check back, see how it goes. Formula is going to be equals the first asset plus equals the second asset. So the first asset is 8,000 minus zero. I'm going to skip that, divided by 10. And yeah, we want a whole year. So that's going to be $800. And then the second asset was 4,000. They said to use 10 years in general for both and no salvage value. So I skipped the minus zero, divide by 10. And this one is July 1st at the end of the year. So I'm going to do a time 6 over 12. I really recommend you do 6 over 12 so your formula documents your thinking and documents your work. So 8,000 divided by 10, that's going to be 800 right here. 4,000, that's 400, but it has a 200, so we got 800, and so it's going to be 1,000. All right, depreciation, almost there. What's that credit going to be called? I don't feel like typing it. It's right here. Notice that this company did not do a um, comma equipment just plain old accumulated depreciation 
Okay, let's get that in here. Depreciation expense. That's number four. One thousand. And accumulated four. One thousand. Clean here. Yep, complete there. Let's see where we're at. Okay, number four is good to go. Moving on to number five. Interest payable, end of year two, $140. $140, interest payable. Oh, oh, look at that, nothing. So nothing has been recorded yet for interest payable. We need to record interest payable. Okay, so that's going to be number five. Payable, credit. Okay, so what's the, hey, that's not what I wanted to do. What's the uh, debit going to be? How do we record accrued interest? Interest expense, you got it. All right, let's get that up in the worksheet. Interest expense, number five, 140, and interest payable, 140. Okay, and the last one, number six. Company uses the periodic inventory system. Inventory, okay. So periodic, there's two inventory methods, perpetual and periodic. Perpetual is what we see most of the time. Like when you go to the grocery store is a great example. You know, there's trucks coming in the back and there's people scanning in inventory all day long and stocking and shelving and moving inventory around. Inventory coming in. And every time inventory is going out, like you and me, we're buying groceries and we're scanning our groceries, inventory is going out. It's perpetual. Moment by moment, minute by minute, inventory is being recorded. Computerized, perpetual. This is the other one, periodic. So periodic is like, okay, we're busy, we're a small business, we're not doing that. We're going to take an inventory count at the end of the year and settle up for taxes and that's it. So that's what we're going to do right now. Let's find that ending number, and you could think of like an inventory count. So came in, did an inventory count at 17,400. Let's get that recorded for inventory. 17,400. 17,400. Something got a little goofed up down here. What was beginning inventory? Beginning was 12,500. And I'm just going to clean this up real quick. My line is in the wrong spot. There we go. Beginning, ending, before, after. Okay. Now, we've been recording inventory here, there, and everywhere. So here's one of them. B, cash, purchases, so inventory purchase for cash, B, not beginning, Excel's getting all carried away here, and then down on here when we were working on payables, we've got a credit to inventory and a debit for inventory, so 2A, credit 6100. And 2B, debit inventory 8500 so that's this one and this one okay so we have another one of these missing link kind of things so again if you were to do this linear debit 12500 plus debit 123100 plus debit 8500 minus credit 6100 Minus credit, we don't know yet, equals credit, excuse me, debit, inventory, 7,400. There we go. 
So we're solving for this credit, the x right here. I'm going to do, because um, there's a few numbers going on, some students like to do like, uh, you know, like what's going on with the debits. So far the debits are at 144 and the credits are at 6100 and I need to be at 174. What's 144, 1 minus 61? That's one. So right now, these four numbers are 138, and I need to be at one. I need to be at 17, 4. So if I add these three up and subtract 6100, I'm at 138. So 138 minus this equals this. So I need 138 plus 17.4. 138, that would give, bring me more. I'm not sure if I got that in there right or not. Let's play with it. Testing, debit. Debit, debit, minus credit, minus credit. Oh, I went too far. So this, I did 138 plus. This should be 138 minus, oh, because it's on the other side. Got it. So I'm adding these three, subtracting this one to get 138. That gives me a debit side number. I'm, I'm calculating for a credit side, so I need to subtract. So this is the 138 minus my ending balance. It's on the other side. So this needs to be 12600. And again, I'm going to test it. Equals debit plus debit plus debit minus credit minus credit equals. There we go. So, you can play around with the totals there, subtotals, you can solve it this way, linear, however you want to do it. You want to work out this T account, your account analysis, so that your ending balance comes out okay. So this last adjusting entry, this number 6, is going to include this credit for 120600 120600 and it's a credit to inventory. This was like purchase of inventory, and this was you know, like use of sale of inventory. Purchase of inventory, sale of inventory. And then the other two had to do with payment, payment differences or timing differences with accounts payable. So purchase of inventory, sale of inventory. Purchase of inventory, and now we're going to have sale of inventory. How do we say sale of inventory? Yeah, I need another zero here. Sale of inventory. Cost of goods sold. Which, I don't know if you've noticed, is just wide open. It's waiting. It's waiting for this journal entry. Inventory. Well, we've been playing around with that, right? Okay, we're going to work it down to that 17400 Cost of goods sold, it's, it, this is the first time we've recorded anything for the whole year. So without this inventory count and without this calculation of inventory sold, um, we wouldn't have anything for cost of goods sold. So the, inven you know, the income statement would be all goofed up. Okay, let's get number six up here, 12600 Cost of goods sold. 12600 and inventory and look what happened to inventory we need a credit and there's no room which is why I added this second line right here just needed a little more elbow room up in that corner so I got my 12600 my 12600 check your total we're good to go down there Number six, all set, inventory all set. So I'm done with the um, 
what I'm calling my supporting documentation. That's all done. I'm done with number six. I am done working the problem. So all this information here is complete, done, analyzed. Okay, required worksheet, income statement, balance sheet for year two. So we need to finish the balance, excuse me, finish the worksheet. Adjusting entries, everything's all in there. We're moving on to the adjusted trial balance. Cash equals debit plus debit minus credit. And I'm going to copy and paste that down all the way through expenses. And I'm going to get rid of the debit or the negatives. And I'm going to look over it. Asset. Yep. Why is there a space here? I don't know. Assets, assets. Yep, just one for inventory. Yep, okay. Um, just ignore these. We're going to do credits in a minute. Withdrawals, yep. Cost of goods sold, yep. Expenses. I don't know why there's two here either. Okay. Maybe I added something over here in the, in the uh, financial statements. Okay, so come on down to accumulated depreciation. Balance, credit plus credit minus debit. And I'm going to copy and paste that down. And there's a couple here I don't need. Okay, let's check these. Accumulated credit, yes. Payable, 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 payable. Credits, yes. Capital, credit, yes. Sales, credit, yes. Okay. And do we balance? No. <laughs> How come we don't balance? N36 to N60, O36 to O60. Hmm. Something's really out of whack. Let's see. What are we missing here? Oh, do you see this right up here? Oh, no. That's okay. That's not it. I thought maybe we were missing one of those. Um. Everything's good here. Everything's good here. Why are we not okay here? Assets, liabilities, capital withdrawals, revenue, expense. It's like I'm missing a zero or something. Hmm. I'm going to pause for a second. Okay, let's look at accounts receivable. We had debit, credit, so we're sitting in the credit, and we got a big debit. We need to fix this here. Equals debit minus credit. That was one of the ones that was goofy, and then the other one was salaries payable. Let's make sure it's okay. Credit, debit, so it's sitting over here as a debit, so yeah, this one needs to be fixed too. Salaries payable, 1800 Is that what it was? Yeah, 1800 Okay, I'm getting closer. Somehow I goofed up my totals over here. Let's uh, double check inventory too. Debit plus debit minus credit minus credit. Okay. There we go. I was missing this piece right here. That was most of it. Okay, 206.590. Okay. Well, take it line by line. Work in your, your totals here. Take it line by line by line by line. I was trying to speed it up a little bit with the uh, formulas, and that, that got me in some trouble there. Okay, income statement versus balance sheet. So we're moving from these totals and your totals are either going on the income statement or the balance sheet. So up here, cash through capital, that's all balance sheet. Revenue and expense, that's all going down here. So revenue 
it expects. And we're going to work our way down to net income. Oh, there should be a, a row right here for net income. I'm going to update this file and then share it for you. So you have a space here for net income. Revenue minus expense, net income. And then add. Revenue, expense, net income. And when you finish, you'll have these same totals here. Same totals. Okay, now we need assets, liabilities, and capital. So here's assets coming in. And here's liabilities plus a contra asset plus capital. Don't forget owner withdrawal. And then let's compare here, this one compared to this one. And we're looking for that 23,210, that's net income. And then add. So this is how to finish worksheet format. And of course, we balance out. OK, now we're moving over this way. Now we have everything summarized in the worksheet. So we can transfer here to here. Sales, cost of goods sold, gross profit is the difference between the two. Sales minus cost of goods sold equals gross profit. Salaries. Now let's just say these are all in the right order. So we'd have all of our expenses here. I don't know why there's two auto expenses. Total expenses, add them up. And net income, subtract gross profit, subtract total expenses. And we're looking for that 23,210, good. So I'm going to clean up the file and post the file. I need to get rid of the extra auto expense and I need to get rid of, or I need to add down here for net income. Okay, this is capital at the beginning of, maybe I just want to say beginning. So capital before net income and withdrawals is, if I'm looking at this right, it's this one. And we're going to add in net income. And we're going to have a little subtotal here. Add those two together. And we're going to take out withdrawals. And we're going to subtract subtract withdrawals, and then we've got our ending capital number. Now, finishing up with the uh, balance sheet, we need our assets. Some of these numbers are very familiar. <laughs> yep, 8 and 4,000, 4 equals negative for accumulated. Um, Eight and four thousand for equipment, seventeen thousand four hundred for um, inventory. Yep, yep, yep. Okay, and moving on to the liabilities. Nah, I better not copy and paste. Salaries payable. Looks like they're in a slightly different order. Interest payable. Notes payable. Which one was notes payable? That must be this one. Hang on just one second, I want to check. Yep, they're in just a slightly different order. Okay, and add up the liabilities. 
pull in your capital from your equity statement and add your liabilities and capital. Compare, hold your breath, make sure they balance. Yeah. And so really you could say the balance sheet is the final, final check on this problem. Um, through capital, we're seeing net income. Through net income, we're seeing everything. You know, we're seeing the effects of all of the accounts. I'm going to do one last thing before we close out. You know, if I scrunch this down, we've got a landscape view, two pages for the problem text, the directions. And then we've got a landscape view for worksheet and financials to show the requirements or the answer to the problem. And then we've got about one page down here of, of notes or supporting documentation. So that takes us through this particular problem. That's a really, really good practice problem for account analysis and accrual-based accounting. Nice job today. Talk to you again soon.